I'll give you a little explanation of what I was trying to describe in a couple of videos. This is the the basic skeleton for the um, the horizontal stabilizer. Um, if you think about the back of the plane, the tail of the plane, the horizontal surface, part of it's a stabilizer, this, and then attached to it back here would be the actual elevators, the control surfaces. Uh, I can't really finish this right now, even if I wanted to, because along here, there should be um, some steel welded brackets and a couple of bearings to connect the elevators, and those are on back order. Um, the next step for me would be, will be, um, to prepare all of these ribs um, when they come from the um, the factory, they don't line up completely straight because of the shaping process. And so you do something called fluting, which is to put little bends between each of these holes and that will line up all these holes and eventually pull everything together. But just to get to this point, a lot of modification had to occur. Um, these reinforcement um, bars on the on the rear spar um, had to have all the edges uh, radius so that they would fit snug against the piece they're mounting to and then polished and uh, lots of match drilling all of these holes and final size drilling them and then this is the complicated piece the the front spar has this bend in it it doesn't come bent you have these two pieces of thick um, angle aluminum that they didn't start out in this shape. Um, they were flat and also they were not tapered on the ends. These were square. Um, so I had to fabricate that, do the drilling. This one's messed up. I did it incorrectly the first time. Um, it's too narrow. There's not enough edge distance on that final hole right there. Um, this is correct. And so this one I have to redo. Uh, and then you have to make this six degree bend in here. Underneath it, there are these doubler plates. These are part of like the recall that I talked about. They didn't exist before. So you have to match drill all of this. And then you also have to bend the tabs on these, um, these are the two halves of the spar. And these were squared off right here. This one is ruined, so I'm using it as a test piece to work. And so this is the angle I cut, although you don't know if this is the right angle to cut because later on you're going to be drilling the skin, match drilling from the skin here. So you need to make sure that you don't cut this so far that there's not enough room for wherever that's gonna be. So this one, I just did a rough cut. I think that this will ultimately be the line, but I just did a rough cut so I have some room to work when I was making this bend here. I'm gonna disassemble this and show you how this one got destroyed uh, trying to follow these instructions for cutting the relief hole. So basically you have text instructions here, do this, 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 this. Um, and then call outs here on the big plans and yeah. Okay, part two, I've taken them apart. These are the two halves of the, the forward spar um, for the horizontal stabilizer. Um, I just laid them next to each other like this for comparison's sake, but obviously they would look like a mirror to each other. The instructions, so these were, these tabs were not bent before, they were flat and there weren't these notches. These were completely squared off and these flanges were squared off as well. The instructions say to mark the bend line there. Uh, and then it, it, there's a call out to over here saying to basically, this is looking at, if you look at it right here, that's what we're looking at. So take those corners off, but it doesn't give you any dimensions how to do that. And so it's better to save that for later instead of just guessing because you don't know where this hole is right here yet to get the correct edge distance, which is what they're talking about right here. You have to have the correct edge distance right there. 
uh, that's one thing. But more importantly, and how I screwed this thing up, was I tried to follow this instruction um, to, and it says, to first drill a number 30, which is, a number 30 is uh, an eighth inch, um, almost an eighth inch drill bit pilot hole there and then enlarge it to a quarter, which is a pretty large drill bit. Here's what happened. That ended up looking like this. And yeah, the edge distance, clearly, the minimum edge distance here should be a quarter inch from the edge of this. That's So that's gone, it's completely um, incorrect. And the, the normal quarter inch drill bit on this thin material, that big, just chatters like crazy and made a really terribly shaped hole. I should have, doing that, I sh if I was gonna do that, I should have used a step drill bit, which would have made a cleaner hole, but I didn't. So this is part has been reordered. It'll be here in a few days, which is fine. Um, so what I ended up doing was more research on it and the, the relief hole or notch in this doesn't have to be that big. It has to be a minimum of an eighth inch for this thickness of material. So what I ended up doing was just the doubler that's gonna live here, I put the, I made it up the doubler and then I just copied that arc, drew that on there and then used a Dremel tool and file to to make these notches and these are these are satisfactory they need to be cleaned up a little bit more but this is really what it should be um they just need to be cleaned up so that's that this is one part 20 22 part that i had to replace but i screwed up another one before that which is this reinforcement um angle and this is about an eighth inch aluminum um, you can see that I put the bend in this really after I screwed it up because I screwed it up right here. This, these were square, this and this piece both, these were square pieces before, squared off on the ends. Um, and then this one also, if I can show you, this one uh, was squared up here as well. There was no cut there. This was squared on the top. So I had to do that, taper this, and it calls for, I, I forget, an eighth or a quarter inch radius on the end, and I didn't measure it correctly, and I've since learned a better method for doing that, which is to find a washer with a matching radius and just trace the radius around the outside of the washer. <sighs> so I had to reorder this. This will be here tomorrow. Um, I actually might end up reordering this as well because I'm not happy with the bend. I'm going to talk to Vans Builder Support today and see the, the that's the bend line right there. The bend is the correct um, um, angle, but it's trying to figure out how to bend things properly to keep the proper radius on the bend. And I think that I had it scooted in too far. So the bend line is a little bit further out. So it doesn't mate up with this very well. Or it doesn't mate up with the, you know, where this, because ultimately this gets sandwiched between this and this. And then on either sides of that will be these ribs. So anyways, that's what I'm doing today. After all that blabbing, here I'm getting into recutting or or cutting um, the the replacement splice angle. This is the upper splice angle that I had messed up by not leaving a large enough radius on the end where you make the trim. So I'm going pretty slowly on the bandsaw. Um, I'll chase it down to the line a little bit closer on the disc sander. It's a really coarse grit, so you don't want to go too crazy and then finish it up on the scotch brat wheel. This one came out much better. After that, um, getting into bending, it's a little bit of a process to figure out how to do this correctly. 
Um, but with the horizontal stabilizer, you're looking for a six degree bend on three different parts that are going to be sandwiched together to get that bend both on the left and the right side of the horizontal stabilizer. So go slowly, make sure that you match up to the correct line, not the, not the line uh, that you use to um, make your cuts, but the actual bend line. They're very similar. Counterseeking is a bit of an iterative process. Use a micro stop counterseat cage that allows you to precisely set the depth of the countersink, but it is a trial and error process, so go slowly and uh, work toward the depth that you need. Um, if you countersink it too deep, you can't put metal back in there. So, um, yeah, don't go too quickly. I'm about to start that on the, the big front spar for the wing, so I'll be very careful about that. Um, here you see me kind of going back and forth and testing the depth of that hole uh, against the dimple um, that it will be mated to. Uh, this, the forward stable, uh, sorry, the horizontal stabilizer at this point um, matches, matches flush up against the fuselage once you finally get there. So these um, rivets in the very center of the horizontal stabilizer need to be flush so that there's a uh, flat surface for that mating to occur. Um, I'm recording this in uh, early April. The horizontal stabilizer is done. In fact, most of the empennage is done with the exception of uh, I'm still waiting on the back order parts that I've talked about before. Um, I won't spoil it. Uh, we'll give you a little more information for the videos why that back order is taking so long. Um, but I'm just about to start on the wing kit. Uh, the rest of this video really quickly will show um, getting into the process of assembling the right side of the horizontal stabilizer. The two uh, inboard ribs um, that you see where you see me working right now, those do not have any uh, rivet holes on the flanges. Or, uh, so there's a process of assembling the skeleton and the skin and then making some measurements and some cuts on the forward um, the the forward rib the one that's kind of at the the pointy end of the horizontal stabilizer uh, match drilling that to the spar and then match drilling that to the rib behind it um, which will mate between the forward spar and the aft spar and then once all that's put together and clamped in place, then you can match drill the holes um, to the skin. So uh, this is a pretty involved process being that it's the first piece that the plans tell you to work on. Um, I know that a lot of people opt to begin with the vertical stabilizer. Um, it is a much, much simpler piece and it will give you a better feel for all these metalworking techniques before you get into really cutting and bending and making trims and ultimately probably making some mistakes that will require you to replace parts. So that's that for today. <laughs>